Welcome back. In the previous step, we set up a simple project for AOP and created a couple of business endowed things. In this step, we will refactor a little bit as well as we would want to intercept the calls to the business layer. What we'll do to start off is move the business stuff to a specific package. So I'll say business one is in business package. So move business one to business package and I'll organize the imports, control shift O and also business two. I would also want to put it in the business package dot business and move it. Control one, move business two to the package. And I would want this to move to the dot data. Don't worry about the compilation errors. We can handle that very, uh, we can handle that slowly. I'll move the DO one to data, spring AOP dot data. That's cool. Control one, move DO two. So let's do organize imports and everything would be fine. So all that I need to do is go here and press Control Shift O. It would automatically adjust everything. We have a business layer, a data layer, and we have a Spring AOP application class, which is present in here. Until now, what we have been doing is we got the application context from here. So we, what we did is we assigned this to a local variable. We tried to get the application context, and we were using the application context to retrieve the bean from there. In Spring Boot, there is another way where we can do stuff like that. What we can do is we can implement something called a command line runner. So I'll say implements command line runner. So whatever we have defined in command line runner would be invoked as soon as the application is launched. So change to that. Again, press control one. Oops, you can go here and press control one. It says add on implemented methods. You have to implement a method called run. So inside the run method, I can do whatever I would want at the, as soon as the application launches up. So once the application launches up, the runner would get invoked. And the great thing about using a runner is we no longer need to write in code in a static thing. So I can actually auto wire things in. So I can say at auto wired, I can auto wire all the stuff I would need. So at auto wired business, business one, at auto wired business two, business to let's organize the imports again it would solve all the problems which are coming in one of the important things is eclipse is like the thing which is available for you for free so try and make use of it to do all the trivial things that's why i type in business one business one and just press Control shift o and it would take care of organizing the imports for us so i'm invoking business one dot calculate something and business to dot calculate something. So what would happen? This is, there's nothing uh, fancy in here. This is kind of very trivial stuff. We are just calling business one dot calculate something. It gets auto wired in here and we have defined business as a component, did we? Yeah, this is defined as a service. DAO one is auto wired in there. So the, it, it should just print calculate something. We should give DAO one back and this should print DAO two back. There's nothing uh, really magical about it or something complex about it. Let's use the logger also. So I'll say logger, logger is equal to logger factory dot get logger this dot get class. And I'll make this private. Actually, let's make everything private. Okay, let's use SLF4j, control shift over again. So now I would want to log the values out. So logger dot log Oops, logger.info. Okay, cool. So we have now call both the business methods. Let's see if I can run this. You can see the output that is printed in here. DAO1, DAO2. So the business methods are getting called. The business methods are calling the DAO. The DAOs are auto wired in and we are getting this printed out. So that's cool. That's basically the complete setup that we wanted to do. In this small step, what we did is we implemented a command line runner and we auto wired our dependencies in and we were able to call them from the run method. The run method is one of the things which you need to implement. Run method is what is defined in the command line runner interface. So if you open up the command line runner interface, it defines this run method. So you need to implement the run method and that's what we are doing. As soon as we implement the run method, whenever the Spring Boot application launches up, what it does is it also calls the run method. Once the Spring context is ready, it would call launch up the command line runner and we would be seeing the information which is present in here. In the next step, we would write AOP code 
to intercept these calls. What we want to do is all the calls that are coming into the business layer, we would want to intercept them and log them. Let's look at that in the next step.